ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. When boys line up to run a race, galloping garden sets the pace. He comes in first because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. And so will you once you're eating Cheerios every breakfast. You'll say the Cheerios taste simply wonderful, too. They're already cooked. Shaped like little round O's and just full of good toasted oat flavor. Pour out a big bowl full, add fresh milk and pitch in. You can almost feel the go power. For a Cheerios breakfast is one of the finest ways you can get the vitamins, proteins and minerals your body needs. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day right. Helps give you the good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Go power, you'll get it from Cheerios. Try it and folks will say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! About noon one day, a painfully thin convict named Pecos Jones returned to his cell after a talk with the warden in territorial prison. As the guard locked the barred door, the ailing prisoner's cellmate, a young redhead named Joe Clemens, helped him to his bunk, then filled a tin cup with water. Here, drink this, Pinkus. Thanks, Joey. I'll, I'll sure miss you when you get out tomorrow. Tomorrow's been a long time coming. You going straight when you get out? Maybe. After I take care of a job that needs doing. A good job? For me, yeah. But not for a couple of weasel-faced skunks named Gunnison. Chick and his brother Trig. How'd you know? I never told you... I met him years ago. What have you got against him? They framed me for robbery. Couldn't you prove you were innocent? No, circumstantial evidence was against me. And to cinch the case, they planted $150 of the stolen money in my room. The sheriff found it. It's the oldest trick in the world. Yeah. But I'll get square for it. I'll pay him in lead. You have. I went to prison in Denver years ago for bank robbery. After some double-crossing piles squealed on me. Seems like the varmints I traveled with were all double crosses. Well, what's that got to do with me? I laid awake nights thinking of ways to get even. Then one day the prison chaplain talked to me. He said, Vengeance belongs to the Lord. Uh... I'm older now and closer to meeting the Lord than I was then. I think the preacher was right. Save your breath, Pegasus. Nothing will change my mind about killing those coyotes. Joey, I never had a son. But if I'd had, I'd have wanted him to be like you. Now, I'm going to give you something that'll put you way ahead of the Gunnisons. Huh? What's that? I'll tell you where to locate $150,000 they helped me steal. Uh a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I hid it myself, figuring I'd go back someday and get it. But I'll not need the money. 
I'm going to pass it along to you. Joy, I want you to go straight. Late that afternoon, visitors came to the prison. Slim Fay, the prisoner occupying the cell next to the one shared by Joe and Pecos, was escorted under guard to a room where his brother Len waited to see him. When the guard was out of earshot, Slim said, Pecos Jones and a fellow named Joe Clemens bunk in the cell next to mine. Joe gets out tomorrow. Well, that's but a worn chicken trick. They framed him into this place. He planned to kill him for it. Pecos talked him out of it by telling him where to find a fortune he stole from Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo money, huh? A hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth. What? Clemens knows where it is. He'll lead you to it. And when you get it, remember to save a share for me. Well, don't worry. You'll be taken care of. Len Fay returned to the well-chosen camp where the Gunnisons ate a cold meal. Oh, oh. Hi, Len. <laughs> Just in time for grub. Yeah, some grub. Cold beans, water, and hardtack. Mm. How's your brother? Oh, all right. He said Joe Clemens is getting out tomorrow. Yeah. That might mean trouble for us. Not if Slim's right. Do you two ever heard of a feller named Pecos Jones? Why, sure. We traveled with him once. Slim says he told Joe where to find $150,000 he stole from Wells Fargo. Oh, ain't that dirty double crosser? We helped him steal that money. I thought the law got it when he was captured. He was too smart for the law. Where'd Pecos hide it? Slim couldn't hear that part of it. But if we follow Clemens, he'll lead us to it. We'll follow him, all right. When he finds the hiding place, we'll close in, grab the loot, and head for the border. <laughs> The last time we met that poor Jughead, we framed him. The next time we meet him, we'll kill him. Unknown to Len Fay or the Gunnison brothers, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had been following their trail for several days. Shortly after noon the next day, the masked man and his Indian friend found the place where the outlaws had camped. Crooks eat meal here, Kimasabi. Must them not build fire. They have less than half a day's lead on us now, Toto. Not right. They lead south from here. We'll follow it easy, silly. Easy, scout, easy, follow it. One, two, three. A few hours later, the masked man and Toto halted on a high ridge overlooking the forbidding gates of Territorial Prison. <laughs> the tracks left by three men and their horses indicated that they had waited there for some time. Them stand here and face prison. Watch for long time. Then mount. Ride south. Back from the prison, head south too, Toto. You think Gunnison's and Pella with them wait for riders to come from prison? They may have. Uh, why them do that? Don't know, but Warden Simmons might have the answer. I'll follow the tracks of the Gunnison brothers and the man with them while you call on the warden. Me savvy. Get him up, scout. Come on, Silver. Half an hour later, the Lone Ranger slowed Silver to a halt when he heard Tonto racing to overtake him. Oh, oh. oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh. What did you find out, Tonto? Warden say young fella named Joe Clemens get out of prison this morning. Prison guard, lend him horse. Tell Joe, leave horse, livery stable in town. Joe Clemens, huh? Ah. Me ask Warden if him know why Gunnison brothers wait for Joe. Him say Joe claim Gunnison's frame him for robbery. He might be telling the truth. A Warden Simmons say tell you him plenty glad when him learn we trail Gunnison and him hope we catch crooks. We'll keep after them. Let's go, Tonto. Monster! <laughs> The twisting hillside trail the Lone Ranger and Toto traveled paralleled the main trail from the prison to Sawtooth City, 20 miles away. At dusk, they sighted the distant lights of the town. There, the tracks they followed separated. Oh, 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 easy, oh, oh. Now, one rider angled down to the main trail. Ah, him ride horse with loose shoe. The other two head for the hill. Ah. You think one of Gunnison brothers ride into town after Joe Clemens? I doubt it, Toto. Too many handbills have been circulated about them. 
They're probably waiting in the hills for their pal. We follow fella who go to town? I'll follow him while you go after the others. Oh, maybe it's better for me to ride to town. I uh, want to warn Joe Clemens about the Gunnisons. You go to town wearing mask? No. I'll wear a disguise. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's one the half, half, happy people have to say. Eating our Wheaties and the do, 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 and okay. Okay. Sure, take champion Bob Cousy, who can really make a basketball do tricks. Bob was born in New York, plays with the famous Boston Celtics. Leads them all in fast break play, and Cousy knows the champion way. Starts his day the Wheaties way. Take Neil Johnston, another great champ from the East. Say Neil has been eating Wheaties since he was three feet tall instead of six foot eight. Grew up a long ways on them, didn't he? Mighty appetizing eating, and there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties, and you'll be do 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 and okay. Now to continue. In town, the disguised Lone Ranger went directly to the livery stable. There, the loquacious stable owner eyed Silver admiringly. I've never seen such a handsome, powerful-looking trip. Oh, thanks. I'm uh, looking for a man named Joe Clemens. Why, Joe Clemens brought that big gray in three or four hours ago. The critter belongs to the guard and territorial prison, you know. Do you know if Joe planned to stay in town? Well, he'll stay for the night. Said he'd come back and see me tomorrow about buying a horse. Then he may be at the hotel. Uh, most likely. Leastwise, that's what I told the other gent who came here looking for him. Uh, what? I spotted the loose shoe in his black mare as soon as he came in. After he found out that Joe Clemens had come to town, he wanted to know where to find the blacksmith shop. Black mare, huh? That's right. Easy, said the big fella. Thanks for the information. Come on, boy. That's all right, mister. When and if you're ready to sell that stallion, I'll pay top price. Sorry, he isn't for sale. The disguised Lone Ranger rode down the street toward the blacksmith shop and drew rein at the hitch rail. He was able to see into the lighted shop where the smithy worked on a black mare's left front shoe. Len Fay stood beside the mare. Easy, said the big fella. That shoe's on the stay now. Yes, sir. It fits snug and tight. Len Fay paid the smithy and led the mare to the hitch rail outside. Tossing the reins over the rail, he turned and walked down the street. The disguised Lone Ranger followed him. Len Fay turned into an alley next to the hotel and stopped. Outside a lighted ground floor window. The Lone Ranger studied him for a moment, then entered the hotel lobby. You want a room, mister? No, I'm looking for a man named Joe Clemens. He's in, uh, let's see, uh, room eight. Uh, right down that hall. Oh, thanks. A moment later, the Lone Ranger rapped sharply on Joe's door. Just a minute. What do you want? Are you Joe Clemens? That's right. Mind if I step inside for a few minutes? Well, who are you? What do you want with me? There's a man standing in the alley outside who's been watching you. Huh? Take a look at him. See if he's anyone you know. Well, how do you know he's been watching me? Your window's the only lighted one on this side of the hotel. I don't know who he is. I'll draw this shade. I thought you might recognize him. Oh, he's a stranger to me. And so are you. What's your game, mister? I came here to warn you, Joe. About that critter outside? He and his friends, Trigg and Chick Gunnison, what? followed you from prison. The Gunnisons? Trigg and Chick are killers. For all I know, they might have sent the man outside to kill you. I wanted to warn you. Where are the Gunnisons? I don't know. They follow me into town. Oh, they're not that foolish. The sheriff would arrest them on sight. If that gent outside's a friend of theirs, he knows where they are. He probably does. In that case, I'll get now, him. Now, wait a minute, Joe. For what? I've been planning for years to get square with those coyotes. You'll not do it by trying to take the law into your own hands. The law never gave me anything but a raw deal. 
I swore I'd get even with the Gunnisons for framing me. You'll have your chance. From now on, I make my own chances, my own law. You're wrong, Joe. Yeah, a lot you know about it. I'll get revenge. Vengeance belongs to no man. What? What did you say? Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Huh? He also says, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. What? Where'd you hear that? I learned it as a child from the Bible. The Bible? That's right. You, uh... You and Pecos and the preacher talk the same language. Pecos? Yeah, my... My cellmate in Territorial. He said the same thing. You should have listened to him. Yeah. Maybe you're right. I'm after the Gunnisons myself, but for a different reason. I want to see them pay for their crimes. They ought to hang. They will if they're captured. Here. Here's a handbill describing them. Uh, Chick and Trig Gunnison wanted for murder. This is your chance to help the law get them. Well, how? My horse is at the hitch rail next to the black their friend rode to town. When he leaves, I'll follow him while you take this handbill to the sheriff. Tell him you think you might be able to lead him to the Gunnisons. Well, how'll I lead him? I'll leave a trail you'll have no trouble following. Oh, I savvy. Well, what about it, Joe? Are you willing to do things the right way? I... I'll go along with your plan. Thanks. I'll see you later. Right. Concealed camp in the extensive hills several miles north of Sawtooth City. Trigg and Chick Gunnison had built a small fire. While Trigg added dead twigs to the flames, Chick studied the moonlit trail below them through powerful binoculars. Any sign of land yet, Chick? It looks like he's coming now. There's someone riding after him. We'll move back into the shadows and wait for the critter who's trailing the land. The disguised Lone Ranger saw the fire when he was still some distance from the camp. Who's in the boat? Easy, steady, be calm. Leaving Silver at ground hitch, he advanced on foot. As he approached the well-screened clearing, he noticed that it was deserted. He stopped, but Chick had already seen him. Get your hands up, mister. Keep walking toward the fire. Three guns are covering you, so don't try a fast move. A trap, huh? Most you was smart trailing me, didn't you? Take his guns, Trick. Right. Hey... Now that he's stepped into the firelight, I recognize him, Chick. Who is he? The gent who was talking to Joe Clemens in his hotel room tonight. I seen him through the window. What's your interest in Joe Clemens? That's our business. Maybe Joe told him about the loot, Chick. Maybe Joe plans to split it with him. Is that it, stranger? What loot are you talking about? The $150,000 Pecos Jones stole from Wells Fargo. Pecos told Joe where he hid it. How do you know? My brother Slim overheard him a-talking in prison. Only thing we don't know is where to find it. So that's why you trailed Joe Clemens. He's going to lead us to that money and gold. Only he doesn't know it. But you'll not live to tell him we're wise to him. Let him have a trick. Right. You drop guns. Uh, what? Oh. oh. He got him covered, Kimosabe. He's behind us. You drop guns or stop living. Chick Gunnison whirled to fire at the sound of Tonto's voice, but the Indian's gun roared. <laughs> The outlaw spun under the impact of a bullet in the shoulder. I'll kill you for that. When Trigg and Len turned to face the Indian, the Lone Ranger's fist went into action. You? A hard blow to the side of Len's head sent the outlaw sprawling. He fell against Trigg, knocking the killer off balance. Momentarily stunned, Len went down, but the Lone Ranger had already grabbed his gun. Before Trigg could shoot, the Lone Ranger fired Len's revolver. Oh, my hand. You busted my hand. Make another move and I'll smash your arm. All right, Kimosabe. Yes, thanks, Toto. You got here just in time. Me have hard time find an outlaw camp. Then me see fire a few minutes ago. Me come here, find out. See you. Good work. Oh, what hit me? I did. And if you want any more trouble... Oh, I give up. I, I'm hurt by shoulder. We'll bandage it after your hands are tied. I'll keep them covered, Toto. Me tie hands, then dress wounds. <laughs> Half an hour later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode toward town with the Gunnison brothers and Len Fay. When they met Joe Clemens and Sheriff Sam Rush, the lawman studied Tonto closely and grinned as the Lone Ranger said, You know all about the Gunnison, Sheriff. Len Fay's travel with them. You're doggone right I know about the skunks, mister. 
And I think I know who you are. You do? I remember seeing Tonto, and I recognize your voice. On top of that, I know your horse. There's not another one like Silver in the West. Oh, where we meet before? Well, I was a member of Sheriff Brand's posse in Calumet. You helped him capture the Ringo Duran gang. Oh, yes. I'm downright proud to meet you again. Well, thanks, Sheriff. I'm glad Joe brought you here. I want to see those coyotes hang. Oh, they'll swing for their crimes, all right. And Len will probably get a long prison sentence. Good. Joe, they said you know where to find the loot Pecos Jones hid. Uh, well, I... Wells Fargo's offered a $10,000 reward for the return of the stolen money. Yeah? You'll earn the reward by turning it over to the law. That's right. If you know where to find it. Well, it, uh, it's not really mine. It belongs to Pecos. It belongs to Wells Fargo. Well, old Pecos wanted me to go straight when I got out of prison. So I... I reckon I might as well go all the way. You've made a good start on the right track. Sheriff, you and Joe will be able to handle the prisoners, won't you? The hard work's already been done for us, mister. We'll have no trouble with them from here to jail. Then Todd and I'll leave you. Good luck, Joe. Thanks, mister. Thanks forever. I hope we meet again. So do I. Ready, Toto? Uh -huh. Adios, Sheriff. So long and thanks. Come on, Phil. Come on, Scout. I'd give anything for a six-shooter right now. I gunned that critter and his engine, pal. <laughs> you boys got away with framing me into prison, but I'll have the last laugh. What do you mean? I'll have a front seat at your hanging. What's more, I'm going to write, Pegasus. And tell him he was right about vengeance. You might likewise tell him you met the Lone Ranger. Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.